And also, also having now that the funds generated, say, from Terranea, the TOT, all of that must be incredibly well, that's, helpful. Well, that, that's helping the CIP reserve. I would think. Yeah, that's helping the CIP um, reserve. And I want to thank Terranea for, you know, everything that they've done. I, I, I understand that they've, since they've opened, I believe they've contributed almost $10 million or $10 million. Over a three-year period, right? And TOT tax revenues right. to the city. So well, I want to thank Terranea for doing such a great job. You yeah. Know, and, uh, I'm so pleased that they're doing well. I really am. Yeah, it's a quite a, it's a jewel for the community to yeah, have that absolutely. in their backyard. And, um, absolutely. And I'm glad that it's so, showing how successful they are that they're generating that kind of um, room tax that, that, they're, that they're sharing. Good stuff. So uh, then you have as goal number nine, Southern California Edison issues. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know. You got the power. No. <laughs> well, we don't have the power. <laughs> That's the problem. I, I mean, I, I, uh, we had Southern California Edison out here last month. And uh, I don't think our council's very pleased on service that they have provided our residents. I know I've I said a few things that were, in fact, I had some residents actually write me notes saying, Mr. Mayor, that's exactly how we feel. Right. And they, they have not done a very good job in our community. Their infrastructure is old. They haven't kept up on their capital expenditures to prevent outages. You know, our city has an average of 26 outages a year for the last five years. Yeah, I, we, I know I, where I am in Seaview, I experience them yeah, uh, more well, than I want to. And it's funny, about a week, 10 days before the representative from Edison came to meet with us, I experienced six outages in seven days in a row. Wow. Every night I had an outage. And so you had something to talk about for and sure. And so I, I, feel, I, I feel our residents' pain. Uh, myself, so what is the so. solution there? What, I mean, how are you going to get them to sort of step up? Well, they, I think they fixed our solution. But, uh, you know, there's other residents in our community and other areas in our community that they go, need to go ahead and address uh, the, those neighborhoods and make sure that they upgrade their equipment, spend the capital dollars. I mean, they, they had, I believe it was... $900,000 in capital expenditures uh, for this year. Mm -hmm. Well, for, I don't know, they're what, a $40 billion company? I mean, $900,000 in our community is not a lot of infrastructure that they're upgrading. And so I, you know, I encourage, I encourage the representative to tell his bosses that, look, I think you guys need to step up the plate a little bit more in RPV. I know that some of the other peninsula cities are not happy as well with with Edison service. So hopefully, like, since we don't have someone here from Edison to sort of give us their end of it, I'm hoping that they are at least saying they're going to be listening and and moving forward. Well, I I think um, you know they're working with city staff uh, even more so now as a result of our meeting to try to address some of these issues. The other issue we have, Liz, is that the you know the fires, um, you know and uh, some of those are, have been, you know, attributed to the power to, lines. to power lines, and so that's another issue that we sent a clear message to them is that we don't want to have any issues with uh, with fires either mm -hmm. due to power lines and, and that kind of right now we're we're in the heat wave and it's hot and hopefully I don't know what you've been hearing in terms of uh, how the um, the power's been I don't know if I haven't heard too much but I I haven't gotten too many emails on power outages I know I you know. That's I haven't experienced any, but that doesn't, that's doesn't mean they're not going to happen not, tomorrow. Not over yet. I know, I know. And uh, when since you mentioned that, you get a lot of emails. Do you get a lot of communication from um, the residents about? I mean, do you hear a lot from them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get probably a few hundred emails a week from residents. Wow. Yeah. You're busy between working full time and full time meetings, and we really appreciate it. Well, since we're still in the thick of summer, I think we hit all 10 goals, didn't we? Did we miss anything? Did uh, I miss the something? system trail, oh. uh, the, the city trail system oh. enhancement. Oh, yeah, that's, that's really important because and that, and as we, someone that walks the trails a lot, I do. Yeah, and we had, we had, uh, we had uh, a meeting on that a few months ago. Uh, we wanted staff to bring us back more information, so uh, that issue will come up before the council again probably 
here uh, September, October. Okay. Yeah. Good. And I do have one. You talked about goals. Well, yeah, yeah. I talked about right now, like, I mean, you have all these goals, but in terms of right now, what you would define as the, probably the most important project you see the city working on currently, and I, I asked you what that would be. Well, I think San Ramon is uh, very important. We, we have to find a way to address that for a number of reasons. Not only is it uh, an, uh, a situation that is gonna under, could undermine the switchbacks in one of our main arteries on PV Drive East, but we do have the time issue that we need to go ahead and get funding so we can, we're not in jeopardy of losing our, our, our state grant. Right. Yeah. Uh, the other issue that I wanted to talk about is another goal that I'm going to be bringing forth to the council. And that is a um, mutual assistance cooperation uh, arrangement with the other cities on the peninsula. Uh, this is something that was... Um, as a result of me seeing some, fo some uh, video from the Japan uh, tsunami. tsunami. And I really think that our whole peninsula needs to be prepared if we have a massive earthquake you know, out in the San Andreas and that triggers some type of uh, you know, tsunami or something like that. Um, Basically, the peninsula becomes an island onto itself. Right, when they cut off from water. We're, well, we're cut off. We're cut off, and the devastation that happens in Los Angeles, I think, would you know, there there could be such um, demand for resources in the city of Los Angeles that FEMA may not get to us for a while, and so we have to look at trying to be self-sustaining in some way um, if such a disaster were to befall us, and. Some of the things that we would be looking at in working with the other cities, because I think each city has some type of uh, emergency preparedness. I know we have an emergency preparedness committee here in mm -hmm. the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. I know that the city of uh, Palos Verdes Estates has a very good uh, emergency preparedness program. But we would, we would work with, uh, in preparation with American Red Cross and our Area G disaster coordinator, uh, did you know that we had a Area G disaster coordinator uh, assigned not, to us? I did not. Yeah, the, all the areas in, in the city of this area in Southern California are um, designated into a, uh, a disaster zone, okay. if you will. And then there's a coordinator assigned, and we've been assigned a gentleman named Jeff Robinson, and he is uh, working with our city in a two-year project. Oh, great. On, on well, we should have him on our PV City Talk. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. And I think he's working very much with uh, our city staff. Okay. But it would be in, co in conversations with the American Red Cross and the, uh, this Area G disaster coordinator to just the basics of what we need to, to do. We're, we're not going to try to recreate the wheel. Right. We're going to just use the resources that everyone sort of has share them. and share them, use economies of scale, that kind of thing on, you know, if a something, God forbid, you know, was a, a big mega disaster that we would be prepared and be able to help our residents all over the peninsula. So leaders from all four communities on the Hill are all, they're all on board to do this? Well, not yet. This, we're, this, we're proposing in our city council. We're going to talk to the, like I said, American Red Cross and the, uh, the disaster coordinator and then talk with the other cities and encourage them to say look That's let's exciting. come together and, and work together on a plan in case uh, something like this happens right. that we're prepared. It's all about prevention. And it because like there's, there's three areas that I see are, are necessary. Number one if a mega disaster happens we're gonna need water. Okay that's the most important thing water. Okay medical assistance uh, we don't have hospitals on the peninsula yes we have some some clinics but uh, you know they could be easily overwhelmed and so we need to be prepared on that front as well and then you know food supplies i mean uh if we had all of our residents here at one time which is like a hundred thousand you know on the whole peninsula um we would well maybe it's not that high maybe it's about seventy thousand right but, we would have to deal with maybe perhaps being cut off for a week or right. 10 days, something like that, 
if there was a mega disaster. And so it's, it's important for us to have some idea how we, we, we would deal with that. And it's also important as our residents are watching to make sure that they're doing what they need to do at home. And exactly. I know I'm guilty of it. If all exactly. my PTA meetings have been about disaster planning, I have to admit, I mean, I don't have enough water probably right now. I guess I only have canned food, but you got to do your own thing too. You got to do your own thing, but we, you but know. what you're doing is fabulous. But like I said, the, as far as how do we deal with a lot of medical, you know, cases and that kind of thing, uh, injuries, those are the things that we want to go ahead and see if we can formulate some type of plan to, right. to deal with that. I'm surprised, actually. I thought maybe something like this would already have been in place, but I guess it's not. So this is great that you're making that initiative. There's no time like the present. No time like the present. Well, keep us posted on that. And once you meet, and uh, that would be uh, really exciting to see. And also talk to the Area G coordinator, who is not just for RPV, you're saying is in charge of all the communities on the Hill. Yes, it? yeah, this area, yes. Okay. Well, as we start to sort of wrap it up, we've covered a lot of ground here. Um, anything that you want the community to know more about? I know it's the summertime, anything the council's been, you know, really addressing, anything that, that, that comes to mind that you want to share? Well, I, I just want to tell them to re enjoy the rest of the summer, what, what <laughs> is left. Uh, we're, we're having some, some hot weather right now, and, you know, and... Enjoy enjoy it while it's while it's here, and right. hopefully some cooler weather. Will I be asked you if you got to take any summer vacation with your family, but someone the, has to be working. No, no, the mayor I never have, gets. The mayor's always working. This year, I, I have not taken any vacation time. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, thank you for being here as always, and uh, you give us such helpful information, and we'll have you back uh, when fall starts. And great. you can give us an update. Okay. Great. Look forward to it. All right. And, and thanks, and welcome back. Thank you. It's great to be back home here. That's going to do it for this edition of RPV City Talk. I'm Liz Brown-Swanson here with the mayor. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.